the grass has finally turned to full green. And we're like Orpheus, the mythical character destined to realize his love for Eurydice each spring after a winter of waiting. The flowers and plants have pulled off their annual miracle by springing into color. And the literal seeds planted by students of South Berwick's elementary school are taking root, taking off with or without spring sun. We're back here at Central School for the ribbon cutting of the new hoop house that Kathy Gunst and many other volunteers made, inspired by Michelle Obama's Let's Move initiative. We're kind of at the official beginning now. We are certainly not in the middle or the end. There's so much work to do still. I'd like to have um, Terrence Parker come out, please, and Kathy Gunst. I, I have found that as long as I've been here teaching or as a principal that everything comes together and makes sense at, at, at just the right time. So we've been doing responsive classroom, we've been doing Lucy Calkins writing. Responsive classroom is about respecting each other, about respecting the things around you, taking care of it. Lucy Calkins writing is about writing about details in small moments, writing about nature, writing about what you know. Then to have Terrence come and say to me, you know, Thoreau said he learned to write by being in nature, and that's what we've seen. The kids can go out and look at a seed or look at a plant in that, and they know how to write about what they know. Landscape architect Terrence Parker saw an opportunity to join the school, not simply to its own yard and surrounding natural environment, but to connect the school to the larger town. Like Kathy Gunst, he, along with many others, spurred a large volunteer effort around the school. It's going to be like a community park. Yeah. The central school and the library, this is going to be like the, the central green space for the town. So there's huh? play structures, you can play ball over there, there's going to be a meadow and all sorts of native plant materials to study. Uh -huh. uh, and have a walking trail, so it's going to link the library, you know, kind of through this kind of... Uh, it's a rewilding of what was kind of like a mm -hmm. forgotten landscape. Like many successful endeavors, the energy of Terence's rewilding project combined with the cultivation of Kathy Gunst's hoop house project. This is our outdoor classroom. A lot of it we're still trying to build. Over there is the hoop house, yeah. and in the woods there's um, all kinds of animal sculptures that um, we put together during Fine Arts Week. If you've ever cooked or made a smoothie with Mrs. Gunst in Central School, raise your hand. If you planted a seed in a newspaper cup made by a parent volunteer, raise your hand. Well, I serve on the Agriculture Committee, and um, I'm very interested in the movement around eating local foods, feeding our kids more healthy foods, supporting our local farmers, and uh, teaching kids to grow things in the school. So we're, we're looking for good examples of that, and we had heard about what was going on here. This is also part of uh, Michelle Obama's program to match local chefs and uh, professional cooks with food programs. So it was just a, it was a great opportunity for us. You know, when you serve on the committee, Sometimes people just want to talk about the policy, and it's just great if you have a story that you can bring back and say, no, I talked to a little kid. He really liked growing the spinach and eating the spinach. He thinks it's good. This is an outdoor classroom, quite literally. Um, the day we planted all the seeds, I said to every single teacher, this is your classroom. Use it as much or as little as you like. Bring the kids out here. Use it for science, use it for English, use it for nutrition. You know, it, the, the kids have been writing poems. They've been writing short stories. We have an iPad that we got grant money for, so it's exclusively for any kind of fiction that inspires the kids. I mean, they're now, six peas out and the spinach is ready so we're going to start picking next week and they're going to actually start eating what they grew and then the next dimension builds it becomes real 
the, the movement around uh, encouraging more local farms and giving them the markets that they need, uh, getting our kids used to eating local foods, getting our communities used to cooking local foods, you can deal with a lot of environmental and economic issues. You know, we've, we've turned away from the local farming systems that we had in the past. And what that means is that today, we truck food all across the country, we truck it around the world. You think of the uh, environmental impact of all that trucking, you think of the impact of chemical agriculture and big commodity farms that happen out in the Midwest. We could do a lot to change that if we were willing to support more local agriculture. Give a big hip, hip, hip. hooray. Ready? One, two, three. Hip, hip, hip. 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 hip.